welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway. Now today I'm taking you back to the eventful reign of King Henry VIII. But on this day in Tudor history, the 5th of July, 1535, Henry VIII's former Lord Chancellor and former good friend, Sir Thomas More, wrote his final letter. More was imprisoned in the Tower of London at the time. He'd been sent there in April 1534 after refusing to swear the oath of allegiance to the Act of Succession. He explained to his daughter, Margaret Roper, that although he would not deny to swear to the succession, he could not swear the oath offered to him without the jeoparding of his soul to perpetual damnation. His refusal was seen as an act of treason and he was imprisoned for it. During his time in the tower, he spent his time in contemplation and prayer and wrote prayers, letters and treatises. In the meantime, members of the king's council tried to persuade him to submit to the king, but his conscience just wouldn't allow him to. He was tried for high treason on the 1st of July 1535 and pleaded not guilty to all of the charges laid against him. But he was found guilty and sentenced to a full traitor's death, although it was commuted to beheading. On this day in 1535, the day before his execution, he wrote this final letter, addressing it to his beloved daughter, Margaret, or Meg. It was written with coal on pieces of paper that he could obtain by stealth. Here is what he wrote. My good daughter, our Lord bless you, good daughter, and your good husband, and your little boy, and all yours, and all my children, and all my godchildren, and all our friends. Recommend me, when you may, to my good daughter Cecily, whom I beseech our Lord to comfort, and I send her my blessing, and to all her children, and pray her to pray for me. I send her a handkerchief, and God comfort my good son, her husband. My good daughter Dawns hath the picture in parchment that you delivered me from my Lady Conyers. Her name is on the back side. Show her that I heartily pray her that you may send it in my name again for a token from me to pray for me. I like special well Dorothy Coley. I pray you be good unto her. I would wit whether this be she that you wrote me of. If not, I pray you be good to the other as you may in her affliction and to my good daughter Joan Allen to give her, I pray you, some kind answer. For she sued hither to me this day to pray you be good to her. I cumber you good Margaret much, but I would be sorry if it should be any longer than tomorrow. For it is St. Thomas even and the Eutus vigil of St. Peter. And therefore tomorrow long I to go to God. It were a day very meet and convenient for me. I never liked your manner toward me better than when you kissed me last, for I love when daughterly love and dear charity have no leisure to look to worldly courtesy. Farewell, my dear child, and pray for me, and I shall for you and all your friends that we may merrily meet in heaven. I thank you for your great cost. I send now unto my good daughter Clement her algorithm stone, and I send her and my good son and all hers God's blessing and mine. I pray you at time convenient, recommend me to my good son John Moore. I liked well his natural fashion. Our Lord bless him and his good wife, my loving daughter, to whom I pray him be good, as he hath great cause, and that if the land of mine come to his hand, he break not my will concerning his sister Dawn's. And our Lord bless Thomas and Austin and all that they shall have. In the book Last Letters, in his essay on Moore's Last Letter, Terence McCarthy notes that for Moore, the things that were now important had no earthly prestige, not kings, but handkerchiefs, algorithm stones and pictures in parchment, and that these things might seem an object of trifling insignificance, but they were important to Moore. I was interested in the names that Moore mentions in this last letter. Meg, who the letter was addressed to, was Moore's eldest child and one of four children he had with his first wife, Joan, Jane or Joanna Colt. 
She was born in 1505 and had married William Roper in 1521. She was a learned woman who was incredibly close to her father. And after his execution, she retrieved his head from a pike on London Bridge for a proper burial. Cecily was his third daughter by Joanna. She was born in 1507 and had married Giles Heron in 1525. Moore's good daughter Dawns was his second daughter, Elizabeth, who was born in 1506 and who'd married William Dawns in 1525. Dorothy Colley or Coley was Meg's maid and was married to Moore's secretary, John Harris. In the last letters of Thomas Moore, editor Alvaro de Silva explains that Joan Allen was another maid who likely grew up with Margaret and her sisters and attended the school that Moore ran at home in Chelsea. John Moore was Moore's only son and heir. He was born in 1509 and had married Anne Cressica in 1529. Thomas and Austin were John Moore's eldest children, born in 1531 and 1533. Thomas would live to 1606, but Austin died as a child. And the good daughter Clement was Margaret Clement, who was adopted by Moore as a companion for his daughter Meg after he spotted her intelligence and piety. Moore had her educated with his daughters. She married physician John Clement, who taught her Greek while she was in Moore's household. She was close to her adoptive father and was the only member of Moore's household who witnessed his beheading. Moore's second wife, Alice, who he'd married in 1511, within a month of the death of his first wife, is not mentioned in the letter. But Terence McCarthy states that we shouldn't read too much into this, for there may have been no need for him to mention her if she was with him while he was writing it, or he'd had chance to say his goodbyes to her already. Seymour Baker House notes that Moore had once written that he could not tell which was dearer to him, the wife who bore their children or the wife who raised them, although privately he intimated that his second wife was less intellectually capable. So it would be unfair to surmise that Alice is not mentioned because he didn't love her. And what about the algorithm stone that Moore once sent to Margaret Clement? What's that? Well, in his book, Sir Thomas More, His Life and Times, William Joseph Walter explains that an algorithm stone was a device for learning arithmetic, something in the nature of the multiplication table. Moore was an intelligent man and would have had no need to learn arithmetic, but perhaps he used it for mathematical puzzles to keep his mind active while he was in the tower and now wanted his adopted daughter to have it as a keepsake. I was interested to learn that following Moore's death, Margaret Clement ministered to the Carthusian monks who'd been imprisoned in Newgate after also refusing to sign the oath. They were chained to posts and Margaret bribed their jailer so that they could be given food and kept clean. Unfortunately, the king found out about it and put a stop to it and the monks died of starvation. But she did her best to save them or at the very least to make their final days more comfortable. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 5th of July 1589, three Essex women were hanged at Chelmsford in Essex after being found guilty of murder by witchcraft. You can find out how these women came to be accused of witchcraft and why they were hanged in last year's video, which I'll give you a link to in the description. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking right about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live and you can leave me a comment and give me a like. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.